In the previous lectures, we saw how computable measures such as Shannon entropy and even lossless compression algorithms have some limitations. Here we will introduce a method that complements Shannon entropy and extends the power of the CTM method in the quest to seek for mechanistic generative models. We will also see how measuring algorithmic complexity can help in analyzing real-world data and produce candidate models and therefore how these methods contribute to the discussion of causation. So, in the last lecture we saw how we were able to produce an empirical distribution based on algorithmic probability and related to the universal distribution. But that method could only take us halfway because Despite the computational power that is required to calculate it and that we put into its calculator, calculation, we will never be able to generate all possible models by running all possible computer programs to find real-world models or cover real-world data. To go as far as to cover and discover models such as Newton's gravitation, we would probably require using the computational power of the entire universe to do it by brute force. In reality, however, while we produced values for strings up to length 30 or 40 bits, the longer the strings, the less of them are generated by our method. So we had to find a way to carry out this algorithmic advantage to larger pieces of data and to the generation of longer models. The block decomposition method is this method, and it allows us to extend the power of the coding theorem method by using a combination of Shannon entropy and algorithmic probability. The idea is to divide a piece of data into smaller segments for which we have algorithmic probability approximations and then count the number of times that the local regularity occurs in data. The block decomposition method consists in discovering what we call causal patches for which a computational model is found by CTM and thus low algorithmic complexity is assigned in a Rube Goldberg machine, as you may remember, for example, even when there is a deliberate purpose to convolute a process, the chain of cause and effect is all over the place, and by focusing on those places, one can find the mechanistic nature of something as obfuscated as this is. BDM shows that the best solution is uh, to approximate generative models by making use of uh, the best of both worlds, using each um, method, either uh, CTM, BDM, or entropy, were relevant and prat practical, and thus combining local estimations of algorithmic complexity in a clever way helped by classical information theory, basically covering each other's back when they're on their perform, either because entropy cannot find causal patches or because the estimations of algorithmic complexity are limited, limited to local and small pieces of data, then we have a method that actually can deal with much longer data and arbitrary long models. The idea is that we can cover any system or object as we have on the screen with as many local observations to fit our CTM method that is able to deal with small objects. And then the aggregation of the information of all those pieces together would give us a good idea of the nature of the dynamical system and even give us a landscape of which pieces are of lower or higher algorithmic complexity in the system, telling us, for example, which regions may be subject to external sources of information that may appear as noise. So this is how the formula for BDM looks like. BDM decomposes a piece of data X into K smaller pieces for which estimations to their algorithmic complexity have been pre-calculated by CTM. But if some of those pieces are exactly the same, we just don't add them twice. This is because two objects that are the same should not have twice the same complexity. For example, a tighter upper bound of the algorithmic complexity of the string 10111 repeated twice should not be twice their complexi complexity added separately, but the complexity of the computer program that repeats the same string twice. 
So estimations are cleverly added up according to classical information theory, because we know how many bits we need to produce a repetition, which is the logarithm of the number of times that such an object with index i is repeated. There are some other ways to do this even more sophisticated, and we have explored many of them, if, if not all. For example, not adding the complexity of two pieces that look statistically similar. So the more similar to each other, even if statistically, we know that we can write a computer program taking advantage of such similarity to only include the complexity of one of the pieces, and then only add a fraction of another similar piece to the first one. However, the performance of these other ways to add up such pieces was similar for practical reasons, so in general we will use this simple version unless we specify otherwise. There are some other parameters involved in the formula. L, for example, tells the size in which the object should be broken, and M allows overlapping those pieces for a more, more smooth coverage like the one we saw in one of the root Goldberg diagrams with the um, red circles uh, overlapping each other. CTM, in contrast, requires the number of n states of the rule space from which the estimation of algorithmic complexity is made, and k the number of pieces in which um, the original data was chunked. You may remember that entropy produces a Bernoulli distribution when plotting entropy values of all strings up to some length, sorted by the number of ones. Lossless compression also produces Bernoulli distributions, typical of statistical measures, suggesting that it does not identify any non-statistical regularity among all those strings that entropy could not already uh, identify. However, when using BDM, a very different distribution is produced, and compared to the other ones, after normalizing between 0 and 1, we can see that it conforms with the theoretical expectation, identifying some strings that should be assigned less randomness than what entropy and also compression assign them. So this is the power we gain in connection to causation by following this approach, and we believe it is of fundamental nature because it does go directly into the kind of approach able to contribute in the challenge of causality. For this reason, we call these gaps between the distribution um, of entropy and compression and BDM the causal gaps. As an example of strings with high entropy for any granularity, but low compressibility and low algorithmic complexity, there are these two strings that turn out to be produced by many small Turing machines. So what would these CTM and BDM methods do with, for example, the binary digital expansion of a mathematical constant such as pi that we know is of low complexity but is also random looking. In some tests, we were able to show that our methods can, even if weakly but statistically significant, tell cases such as pi and the two Morse sequence apart from tr truly algori algorithmic random sequences, in the same base and with the same length. CTM assigns significantly lower randomness to known low algorithmic complexity objects, even when they are random looking. If pi is absolute Borel normal, as strongly suspected and statistically de demonstrated to any confidence degree, pi's entropy and block entropy asymptotically approximate 1, while by the invariant theorem of algorithmic complexity, CTM would asymptotically approximate zero. And this is the behavior we found when applying our numerical methods. Smooth transitions between CTM and BDM are also shown as a function of string complexity, indicating that the combination of entropy and carrying out an algorithmic measure such as CTM is able to capture local algorithmic complexity. And the method is actually very sound. An interesting property of BDM is that, because we can continue updating the values of CTM, BDM can also always be improved, and it is optimal in the sense that the worst BDM can do 
is to behave as channel entropy alone, as we have proved um, in previous works. But by taking these local estimations of algorithmic complexity, we combine the best of wo both worlds. So we keep the statistical power of Shannon entropy and bring local improvements to detect small causal patches along the way, giving us key insight into the nature of some objects of interest, especially those related to cause and effect. Remember that we can freely talk about the entropy of pi only because as an observer we may not know that it is pi, otherwise we would not need to apply entropy to the sequence. We would simply say that as a deterministic process, pi is of the lowest possible entropy because no digit in its expansion comes as a true surprise. But as an observer this is very different. We never truly have access to the generating source of a complex phenomena or otherwise said to the associated distributions in which an object such as pi would belong to such a distribution. Uh, in this case with only pi as element, that's why there wouldn't be a surprise, but we don't have access to those distributions in general. So as an observer, just as it happens when we throw a dice, we have no access to all the details and information in the process about the object, and we are forced to apply methods such as entropy, compression, or our methods, and they would compete at detecting features other than pure randomness, where we know no randomness exists. Many tests can be performed to see if the measures based on CTM and BDM conform to the theoretical expectation, are robust and well behaved. We know, for example, that sorting strings by complexity and measuring their com logical depth, one should get a concave down curve because logical depth assigns shallowness to both simple and random strings, with only the strings in the middle of those two cases assigned high logical depth. And this is exactly what we get when sorting strings by CTM and BDM, but not when sorting by compression or entropy, even though CTM and BDM are generalizations, but are also improvements over both entropy and compression. In the next unit, we will provide more tests that provide evidence of the stability and robustness of CTM and BDM. To illustrate how CTM works, this is one example of a model found by CTM. The rule of the Turing machine shown on top produces the string 0011100011. And the Turing machine represents a generative mechanistic model for that string. There were only very few short computer programs able to generate the string, and the string is therefore of high algorithmic complexity. Yet the string is produced in relatively short time and thus has low logical depth, or is shallow. To illustrate how BDM works, let S be an observation. For example, of the evolution of a dynamical system in space and time, but we only see the last evolution, for example a long string such as the one on the screen. Then the estimation of the complexity of S over space or time, finding algorithmic models reproducing S or versions close to S, is obtained by the aggregation of smaller models to produce a set of candidate larger generative models producing and mechanistically explaining S. We call uh, this algorithmic sequence model to the aggregation of smaller models constructing a larger model explaining an observation. This process will be the basis of what we call algorithmic information dynamics la later on. And on the screen is an example of a string that can be composed by the output of various Turing machines of which we are providing the numbers in our enumeration. And these Turing machines have different behavior and complexity, but putting them together constitute a model for the whole string. So we do not only assign meaningless complexity values to strings and objects, but we know and generate the computer programs behind them. Those computer programs are able to generate those strings or objects and constitute models of those objects. 
Estimations of CTM and BDM, and of even logical depth, can be obtained online through an online complexity calculator that we have developed over the last years, which is in permanent development and is currently a quite sophisticated piece of software showcasing many of our methods. Of course, for heavy-duty analysis, you should always rather use our standalone programs that we have uh, written in several programming languages, including, of course, the Wolfram language, but also available in many other. The online algorithmic complexity calculator has evolved and will continue evolving over time while we incorporate more features. The current version is not only able to retrieve CTM and BDM values, but also perform interventions to data such as graphs in the way in which we will see is necessary for algorithmic information dynamics. And as we speak, we are working hard on even more sophisticated features to incorporate them into the online complexity calculator that we think will be of value to areas such as machine learning. In conclusion, by introducing CTM and BDM in contrast and in complementation to other measures, such as Shannon entropy, we have seen how important algorithmic information theory and the role of computability theory is in the challenge of causality in science in a fourth revolution towards model-driven causal discovery. In, a, in the next short animated video, you will find a summary.